Welcome to worship. The psalmist calls on the natural world, celestial bodies, fire and earth, creatures and all humanity to praise God. The voices of Simeon and 84-year-old Anna join the chorus today, recognizing what God is doing in Jesus. Simeon's song is often sung after communion, for we have seen God's salvation in the assembled community and have held Jesus in our hands in the bread. Then, like the prophet Anna, we tell of Jesus to all who look for the healing of the world. me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins. Those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives all our sins, not through your own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in the amazing gift of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ, have mercy. 
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Are you, are you okay? I'm What's just the... really sad today. Oh, what's wrong? I just get sad after Christmas. We mm. wait all through Advent for the birth of Jesus, and then Christmas comes, and it's so exciting. It brings so much hope, and then I just feel like so sad oh, afterwards. Like it's over. over. Yeah. yeah. I hear it. That's okay. It's okay to be sad. It makes total sense. I know. Well, I have something really exciting to share with you. Ooh, I'm intrigued. Yes. I have a smile on my face already. I brought to us today, Jesus. I'm so excited about this. This makes me happy. It's Jesus. It is Jesus. We've learned about the birth of Jesus, and now we get to see all that he did. We get to hear about the disciples and yes. the miracles he performed and how he became our Messiah. I yes. mean, come on. It's Jesus. Super exciting things to come. All these amazing stories. Yes, that is something to be excited Cheers about. Cheers you up a little bit. And so much more. Thank you. You should get excited too because yes. this guy is staying with us all year. Yes, he's going to help us um, through our stories, through our Bible stories. Help us to understand maybe a little bit better. Yeah, good. Um, do you think Jesus can help us close in prayer? I think he'd love to. Okay, let's see if he can pray. Clasp your hands. Okay. Do you want to lead this one, Jesus? And bow oh, your he's, head. He's tired from yes. all the travel. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Nicole, in prayer. <clears throat> Good and great God. Good and great God. Thank you for the Christmas season. Thank you for the Christmas season. Thank you for Epiphany. Thank you for Epiphany. And all the stories we are yet to learn about Jesus. Yes. And all God's children say. Amen. Amen. Thanks Talk. for being here with us today. Talk about God's children. I got one right here. <laughs> hey, hey. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. The first reading is from Isaiah 61, verse 10, through Isaiah 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 148 responsively. Hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created who made them stand fast forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth 
and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all faithful servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. The second reading is from Galatians 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit, his Son, into our hearts crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading in this first Sunday of Christmas comes to us in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought him in the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at, was, at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed to, so the, that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phineel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her hus husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers in Christ across the Western North Dakota Synod, grace and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the Christ child who has come. Amen. So first of all, I want to offer you and wish to you a Merry Christmas on this first Sunday of Christmas. It's a blessing for us to be together in worship on this day. 
And second, I want to offer Christmas greetings on this first Sunday of Christmas on behalf of your brothers and sisters in Christ across the Western North Dakota Synod, occupying 163 congregations and 60,000 or so of your brothers and sisters. I offer Christmas greetings from across the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, 9,000 congregations, about 3 million brothers and sisters in Christ in the United States and the Caribbean. And I offer Christmas greetings on behalf of the Lutheran World Federation, of which our denomination of the ELCA is the only representative of from the United States. LWF lives and serves and connects 148 Lutheran denominations together, over 77 million brothers and sisters in the Lutheran Christian tradition, serving alongside one another in 99 different countries around the world, sharing in God's mission and ministry for our neighbors and for one another. There's a great old cartoon from the New Yorker magazine that might reflect how many of us are feeling today. Not just because it's a couple of days after Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, but because, you know what, 2020 has been an incredibly challenging year in so many different ways. In the middle of the living room floor in this cartoon is a dried up, withered Christmas tree. The calendar on the wall reads December 26th. Dad is sitting in his chair with an ice pack on his head and a glass of Alka-Seltzer in his hand. Mom is in a bathrobe and her hair is in rollers and she's looking almost as rough as her husband does. The floor is a mountain of torn up wrapping paper and empty boxes and bows. A child is digging deep inside his stocking just one more time, making sure that there is nothing more to get out of it. In the background, you can see uh, the table in what appears to have been a very large feast that's taken place or maybe some sort of a, an explosion of some kind in the dining room. The caption on the cartoon simply reads, The Morning After. In some ways, that might represent Christmases of the past for us more so than Christmas this year. After all, Christmas this year was different. I don't care who or where you celebrated Christmas. It was different for my family. It was the first year without my mother sitting at the table with us. I hate to actually admit it, but we did miss the ridiculous Christmas gift games she would force us to play each and every year. I actually never dreamt that I'd admit missing those games, to be honest. Many other friends and family that we usually see in the Christmas season at Christmas time, we didn't get to see this year. At least we didn't get to see them in person. Out of, of, out of an abundance of care and concern for each other's health and safety, we decided it would be best if we didn't gather in person together this year. And this is the first Christmas Eve in my lifetime that I didn't have a chance to sit in a jam-packed church sanctuary, light a candle, and sing Silent Night. I think if the New Yorker magazine would release a new version of the cartoon I told you about a couple of minutes ago, I think the caption probably wouldn't read, The Morning After. Instead, it might read something like, The Year That Was. <laughs> so yes, Christmas 2020 was different. Traditions were different, and I don't know, maybe you joined with so many others and formed new traditions this year. The ways we gathered with family and friends and loved ones was different this year. But Christmas still happened. We still stopped to remember and celebrate and give God thanks that Christ Jesus did in fact come to be among us as Savior, as our Messiah. So before we rush to push Christmas aside and move on because it was so unusual this year, let's remember that Christians and Christmas for us as followers of Jesus is just about, is just the beginning. I mean, let's not move on too quickly. Let's sit and rest and linger in that Christmas story just a little longer than the morning after this year. A few years ago, the Southwest, Synod, uh, Southwest Minnesota Synod's bishop, Bishop John Anderson, wrote that the Christmas story invites us to watch for the surprising presence of God in our lives here and now, even as we remember the coming of the Messiah in Bethlehem so long ago. 
We often look for God in the wrong places, Bishop Anderson wrote. The good news of the Christmas story of God incarnate come to us in the Savior Jesus reminds us once again that God works in surprising ways and in even more surprising places. Even in this year's most unusual Christmas experience, God was here. God is here a few days after, and God will be here for all the days to come. Because the Christmas story and our place in it do not leave us feeling beat up and overwhelmed by the chaos that has just happened like that New Yorker cartoon offers. The Christmas story in our place in it invite us to not just listen to it, but to live in it. To live in it just like the Christmas story invited Mary and Joseph, shepherds and wise men into it so long ago. To live in it just like the Christmas story invited an old couple named Simeon and Anna into an ancient Jerusalem temple so long ago. Simeon and Anna have spent much of their life waiting and hoping and praying that the Messiah would come. They're old and tired waiting for death. The Holy Spirit has told Simeon that they will not be able to welcome death until the Messiah comes. Now they hold in their arms the infant Jesus. The Messiah is here. Simeon takes Jesus in his arms and he sings praises to God. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Simeon believes that in this child, God has kept God's promises. God has acted once and for all. In this infant child, Simeon believes that God has addressed our pain and suffering and death. And every time when the morning after is just too much for us to handle, God has promised to bring life. In today's Gospel reading, on this first Sunday of Christmas, those two images are striking, and often there's something that we miss. Birth, new life, and death, closely and intimately connected. Simeon and Anna have been waiting for the Messiah to come in order that death may come to them. Right near the beginning of this gospel, Luke presents a stark vision that part of the Christmas story, a story we often see as the beginning of the story, is also the beginning of the end, the beginning of the death of Christ. But brothers and sisters, this word of death is the very light of the world. One of my favorite theologians is Bishop N.T. Wright, reflecting on this gospel reading in its stark new life and death imagery. Wright offered this. In this passage, we have the old man and woman waiting for their turn to die, worshiping God night and day and praying for the salvation of his people. Luke wants to draw readers of every age and every stage of life into his picture. No matter who or where you are, the story of Jesus from the feeding trough in Bethlehem to the empty tomb and beyond, right, says to us, can become your story. Christmas story. This story of Jesus draws each one of us, you and me, into the story of God who is seeking us and reaching out to us. God seeking to enter our lives in order to give us life. And here's the important thing to remember. God's invitation to you and me in this story is not reflective of the way we may feel the morning or week after Christmas or the way we feel today after having our lives turned upside down in 2020 because of things like politics or social media or COVID-19. As these two old saints, Simeon and Anna, revealed to everyone in the temple, this child is the one sent by God to bring light to all the world. And this light was not just for Israel 
or for the Gentiles or just for the Germans or Norwegians or only for those who wear a mask and practice good social distancing. This story, this story is for all of us, even those of us who don't wash our hands as often as we probably should. When a baby is born, one of the things most of us like to do is to hold the little one. The baby we celebrate at Christmas, the child whom Simeon and Anna recognize in the temple as the Messiah, that baby came to hold us, to embrace us with a love that wakes us up and makes us new each and every day, to shine light into every shadow that we will ever encounter along our journey in this world. Sisters and brothers in Christ, as the Christmas story unfolds in this next year, we watch for the surprising presence of God, not just during a season called Christmas, but in every season of our life in Christ. We watch for the surprising presence of God in every place that we find ourselves in throughout the year. We watch for the surprising presence of God in every person God calls us to be in relationship with us. We watch for the surprising presence of God in every corner of God's good creation, a creation that God calls us to care for and steward. As we discover God's presence in our lives each and every day, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. Merry Christmas, brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that you are blessed this day and all days. Amen.
Please join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in praying today's prayers of intercession. Your response will be, your mercy is great. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days of awakening and growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit of discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those who need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O oh God, according to your word. For all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses of every time and place. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace, as we lift these and all prayers to you, in the name of Jesus, amen. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. I'd invite you to gather your communion elements together. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Go ahead and consume your bread. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Go ahead and consume the grape juice or wine. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as our Lord Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need through the same Christ, our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds the good news, and led the magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go now in peace, share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God. <laughs>